Welcome to Confessions of a Closet Romantic, your little shame-free romantic recess where we have fun looking at the best romantic TV shows, rom-coms, movies, and books on a different theme each episode. This is Poppy, and in this episode, I continue to celebrate my second anniversary with a super indulgent episode all about second chance romance. So this is the second episode in my mini two-part series on second chance romance. It's one of my favorite romantic tropes. And the way I define it at this point in my life is it's all about stories that feature the courage of characters looking for love, romance, sex, and connection at a later age or after relationship disappointments. In my previous episode, I interviewed a former sex therapist and erotic romance writer, Dr. Donna Jennings. She's amazing! And I did an entire episode called Bedroom Therapy on the movie Good Luck to You, Leo Grand with Emma Thompson. This is the movie about a widowed woman working her way through her sexual bucket list. If you haven't seen that, don't miss it! But in this episode, I'm going to wallow in a few more honest and funny movies about dating and relationships later in life. I'll have a few book suggestions for you as well in the show notes. If you follow me on Twitter, and if you don't, please follow me on Twitter, Poppy underscore confesses. Well, if you follow me there, you've seen tweets that let the world know that I've gone on a few dating apps for the first time in years. The experience can be hysterically funny, but also inexplicable and bizarre. My next Quick Take episode will be a little look at dating rom-coms, just to make myself feel better. I've done a couple of episodes now on finding love and romance after 40, and this second chance romance is one of my favorite topics because it's so underrepresented in media, especially romantic movies and rom-coms and even sometimes romances. Listeners, if you're monogamous and you found a lifelong partner at a young age and you're still together and happy, yay! But if you've been a serial monogamous like myself, or if you identify as polyamorous or consensually non-monogamous or any other sex-positive subgroup and haven't gotten so lucky, this episode is for you. I think the dream of finding that perfect connection at whatever stage of life, one that's perfectly suited to us wherever we find ourselves on the sexual spectrum, that urge will always be strong. Human beings crave connection, affection, belonging, and love. That's why I read romance and watch romance, and I'm sure it's why you do too, to keep that hope alive. Lately, I've been searching for movies that show the struggle and joys of non-youthful romance. Movies and scripts that show, no matter how old we get, Connection, romance, sex, and love will always be important for our emotional health. Movies like this aren't always easy to find, but you know I'm here for you. Some of these are definitely more dramatic and more happy for now rather than happy ever after. But, you know, that's what love is like as you get older. As you get older! Okay, the first 10 minutes of The Face of Love with Annette Benning as a widowed woman who finds echoes of the moments she shared with her beloved late husband for years after he passes away is so haunting that when his doppelganger, both played by Ed Harris, actually appears on screen, I gasped. <gasps> The beautiful way this film is structured, the flashbacks along with the music, by the time she tracks this doppelganger down to a local college, it ends up he's a ruggedly handsome art teacher, naturally. 
and by the time she runs away in tears after pretending she wants to audit a class, and the way he looks at her as she runs away down the hall is how we should all be looked at romantically. That's all I'm saying. Then after she freaks out on their first date when he leans in to kiss her, It's really the best kind of conversation you could expect to have, ending with the sexiest hand-on-the-side-of-the-face kiss. Oh, I love those. Look, Nikki, you've had a life. I've had a life. It's selfish, but you look at me in a way that nobody ever has before. And when I'm with you, I feel something different. And here you are. I don't really know you. You don't really know me. I guess your heart's broken. But I don't want to let you go. So, where does that leave us? Oh, this trope is all about that second chance when you're wise enough to parse through it all and appreciate it. Are you looking for something? Um, I guess where all the years went. Yeah. I hate getting older. I know I'm not supposed to say that. What are you supposed to say? That I've grown into myself, that I enjoy being older, wiser, but the truth is I don't. I mean, it's getting harder and harder to look in the mirror. I know. Who is that old fart staring back at me? (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) You know, sometimes I go to bed at night and I think, well, there goes another one, another day, Mm. another year. And I'm not sad about it. I'm not scared. It's just sobering. I don't catch myself walking backwards into the sunset. Oh, waxing sentimental. Yeah, you know, thinking about all the good times and bad times. Yeah, I think about how happy we were. It's been a long time since I thought something good could happen. Hmm. Well, everything is possible now, okay? Summer's gone. We're on our own. I spent my whole life looking for you. I can't believe I found you. I found you, remember? Now, this movie is a romantic drama, (laughs) y'all. The happy ending is where you see it. And it is a tearjerker, but a beautifully constructed one. It's like getting another chance when you're older and wiser and hopefully made up of more wisdom, like Emma Thompson and Pierce Brosnan in The Love Punch. This film is light frothy fun and it makes getting older somewhat of a punchline which is slightly annoying but the acting is funny comedic subtle delight and I love the exploration of the choices we made when we weren't as experienced or wise and then trying for a redo with eyes wide open that kind of rumination in a film never gets old for me oh <sighs> Do you think we're doing the right thing? You know, diamond stealing and kidnapping. Was that a shadow of a doubt? Sit down for a minute. I said sit. Lying down's fine, so. Pan and I had the chin doubles. I said, I can't take it in. I can't take my booze anymore. That's the thing. No. <sighs> Just whips my ass. You're much more likable these days, you know. Oh, that's nice. Thanks. 
Except for you. We were much too young when we met. We should have met now instead. Huh? I don't think it works like that. Why not? Why did the latest one leave you? She didn't actually. I left her. Hmm. How's your back? Terrible. How's your opinions? Okay, I feel guilty even including J-Lo in Marry Me because how many 50-plus-year-olds look like her? That's a rhetorical question. We know the answer is pretty much none, but I'm including this charming movie because Owen Wilson, whom I love dearly, finally looks his age. No shade, but Owen, you're still adorable, but you do have wrinkles now. The reason why this true second chance romance works is because of J-Lo. Her vulnerability as an actor moves me every time, no matter what movie she's in. Yes, I love Monster in Law. Thank you very much for asking. Combine these two cuties in a fake marriage trope? Pop star surrounded by syncophants just looking for something authentic she can count on? And then this idealistic working schlub and single dad who long ago thought that the fun, magic, and romance had passed him by? Yes, please. Wait, what are you saying? Rethink the paradigm. We're not selling the world a fairy tale. We're taking the fairy tale off the table. That's what you did last night. That's what I did? Yeah. Look, I was just trying to help someone who seemed like they're in the middle of a nervous break. We're calling it a break from tradition. A moment of clarity where she picked you out of a crowd and you, my friend, picked her. I don't even know her. Cat Valdez is a legend. Self-made. She was raised by a single father who died before she had any kind of success. Now she's a woman north of 35 in a business that marginalizes women at any age. People love their artists to bare their souls and vilify them if they go too far. Well, I'm not going to let them do that to her. And I'm asking you to help me. How? Stand beside her for three months. And what does she think about this? It was her idea. She had the idea for... Yeah. What if we offered you $10,000? No, no, no. Wrong approach. Offer him, like, a fundraiser. He'll go for that. Oh, huh. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry, are you two... Ew, gross. No, Parker Debs, guidance counselor, same school. How about uh, we host a fundraiser for your math club? Don't answer that. Okay. What about if it's like instead of three months, it's six months, and it could be like a whole math wing? <laughs> I'm thinking about the children. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I don't think anyone's going to believe that she's going to go from Bastion to me. That's a good point. But the fact is, she did go from Bastion to you. Counterpoint! We're not pretending you're in love. We're just going to say that you're getting to know each other, and if it goes further, then great, and if it doesn't... It won't. Not with Come that on. attitude. Well, then it doesn't have to. This is about this moment. Managing the media frenzy until things die down. I have a daughter don't want to drag her into the middle of a circus. I can assure you, we won't impinge on your life whatsoever. Oh, and I realize this establishing scene at their first press conference is meant to be a crowd pleaser, but you know what? It pleases me very much. But it just seemed like, in the moment, the right thing to do. So what? You just saw each other and said yes? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't seem frivolous? Historically, marriage was transactional. It was about expanding your empire. And a woman's value was based on what she brought. Like, you give me a heifer and I'll give you my daughter. It's terrible, I know. That's, you know, I didn't come up with it. But it really was a business deal 
and it wasn't designed to be about love, and maybe that's where people kind of get tripped up now. This is your second marriage, right, Charlie? You wouldn't want to fail again. Well, you haven't lived unless you fail, Bill. You should know that from your time at CNBC. <laughs> Listen, what we did was crazy. We know that, but it was just truly a leap of faith. The rules as they exist pretty much suck for women. I mean, why do we have to wait for men to propose? Why is everything on his terms? Now, I think it is time to shake things up. How about this? We pick the guy, we keep our name, and let him earn the right to stay. Y'all, when they start finding out they have a lot in common emotionally and start getting along, the happiness on Kat's face and dawning realization on Charlie's face, cue the waterworks. And he gets one of the best lines in all of rom-com history. If I'm about to have the best night of my life, which I think I am, I don't want it to be to Robert Goulet. (laughs) Okay. They're listening to the Camelot soundtrack, which is one of his favorites. You gotta see this. It's just so, ah, cuteness overload. And can we just talk about the true second chance romance J-Lo had after filming this movie in real life? Okay, that timing is a marketer's dream. I hope they're happy. I have a thing for movies about second chance romances that start in crushing awkwardness. And I should confess that I watched this movie mainly because I had a little obsession with listicle movie titles. You know, 500 Days of Summer, etc. And 10 Things We Should Do Before We Break Up with Christina Ricci as Abigail, a young single mom who hooks up with Ben, a charming but perpetual man-child pushing 40, played by Hamish Linklater. If only second chances always sounded like this. Hey. I want to apologize to you, and I, I want you to know that I, I, I really want this. So badly. I just, I, I just have bad habits of, you know, when I feel like I'm in something permanent or, or, or binding to, you know, I act out, I get all crazy, like I'm a rat in a cage, you know, I just want to destroy it, like I'm the Hulk. But I got to grow up. Yeah, and I want to learn for you, for us. I want, I want to learn for me. I really miss you guys. The kids are at Tim's. I miss you guys. This movie just captures the fragility of relationships in general, but especially as a single parent and when you have some miles on your tires. But you know what I love best about this movie? The empowering ending. Here comes the spoiler. Spoiler alert. Each person gets their happy ever after, dot, 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 on their own. Sometimes the best romance we have is with ourselves and our platonic loves. And sometimes romance presents some red flags and it's great to see characters grapple with them just like we do. This movie is refreshing, understated, a bit unexpected, beautifully acted. I absolutely loved it. And then there's the amazing Enough Said with Julia Louis-Dreyfus and James Gandolfini. I don't know why it took me so long to watch this movie. It's about Eva, a divorced massage therapist and single mom, maybe in her mid to late 40s, who gradually figures out that the new guy she's dating, Albert, is the ex-husband of a bitter divorced new client, played by Catherine Keener. Oh boy. Marianne needs a friend, and she starts unloading on Eva about the evils of her ex. 
Eva had misgivings about Albert being her type at the beginning. He's a big bear of a man who's a bit messy, but he's also more relaxed and authentic and spontaneous than she is. She starts to fall for him just as her new friend is going to town bad-mouthing him every time they meet up. This movie is full of the awkward complications and protections that we often throw up in romantic relationships as we get older, wiser, maybe a bit more burned, weary, and worn out. And it nails the disconnect that happens when anxieties and preoccupations and insecurities take over. This scene is when they're first in bed together. You didn't actually open your eyes at any point, did you? Uh-uh. No. No worries. I kept my eyes closed. I figured if I couldn't see you, you couldn't see me. You know, I saw you. I'm tired of being funny. Me too. But you're not funny. Oh, Dickly. What? Sorry. It's okay. 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 Here I come again. Oh, goody. <laughs> Oh, my hair, my hair, my hair. Okay. Oh. All right, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but this isn't going very well, so let's just stop. What? You look cute in my robe. Huh. Is everything all right? You have like 400 mouthwashes. Yeah, I mean to use them and um, then I buy them and then I forget about them and then I buy more of them and you have like 80 million toothbrushes I do yeah I only use one of them but then why don't you just throw the other ones out I don't know because they're my friends Oh, and when kind, vulnerable Albert figures out that Eva has been talking to Marianne, oh my God, James Scandolfini is absolutely incredible in this scene. Look, I just want to talk. It, it really was a coincidence, okay? And I wanted it to stop. But she needed massages, and we sort of became... Oh, thank you. We sort of became friends, and I just, I, I didn't know what to do. She needed massages? Yeah. You knew what to do. You just didn't do it. Well, I was very torn. So while you were uh, being torn, she was poisoning our relationship and poisoning your perception of me. Now, why would you want that? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, except maybe that I, I was trying to protect myself, you know, because, you know, because we both been married before, and you know how things can turn out. And, what, what about us? What about protecting us? You didn't protect us. And 
it didn't get poisoned, Albert. I, I still really wanted us to keep seeing each other. I wouldn't know how, you know? I'm so, so, so sorry. I know this sounds corny, but you broke my heart. And I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> And the worst part, the worst part of it is that you made me look like an idiot in front of my daughter. I'm, I'm the idiot. I'm the idiot. I look, I got, I got a lot I gotta do. Tests and everything, school. When is she leaving? Next week, school starts early for her. Yeah, same for Ellen. I guess we're gonna have to get those hobbies going. <laughs> I guess so. Y'all, I wept. It ends well, but the final act just stabs you in the heart in the best way. Lots of personal growth, lots of realizations. And you know what I've realized? I'll take my second chances. If you're in the same position as I am, I hope you will too. If you enjoy this podcast, I hope you'll tell a friend about it. For more information and show notes, visit confessionsofaclosetromantic.com. Hi, Romania, and all my listeners in Eastern Europe. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad everyone's here. Until next time, wishing you all plenty of second chances. Bye.